Today we're ranking the best foods from GMM. As you might well know, not only do we all cook on this lovely Channel Mythical Kitchen, but we also work for a show called Good Mythical Morning. And there are some incredible foods that we all make that end up on Good Mythical Morning. However, you don't get to see how all of them are made. And today, we are all vowing to change that. Well, you three are, because I'm, I'm not going to cook any of them. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but what's gonna happen is y'all are gonna make the best thing that you have invented for GMM in the last month or so, then I'm gonna come in and eat them and rank them. Does that sound good? Yeah! Do you warm up your cooking muscles today? Y yeah! yeah. In you, the microwave! Did you also strain your hamstring trying to kick your cat out of bed because he was biting your toes last night? Yeah! <laughs> All no. right, let's get cooking. Welcome to the other GMM show. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What's it called? As Josh said before, we are the chefs for GMM and we create a lot of really cool stuff like food trends. So this recipe today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a sour pesto gnocchi, which I made for a GMM episode four to 2024 food trends. I feel like one of those babies eating a lemon on TikTok that just can't stop going back to it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah. you're like. <laughs> right. And then they're like, Oh, maybe I'll go back in for right. a little bit more. Right. We're gonna start with the gnocchi, and that is basically what potato, fluffy ass Italian pillows, right? Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and rice these potatoes. Ah. So we have our potatoes nice and rice, and we're gonna start by making the dough for it. And we have some egg yolks that I'm gonna put in this bowl, some garlic powder, some pepper, some salt, some onion powder that I'm gonna mix in here first with a little bit of flour. That's nice of nice. Grab some of our orange, get some zest from this. Um, I always crack up at how people zest things. Like I see a lot of people do that this way. And then Josh likes to do it, like where he makes Parmesan cheese. And he's like, oh. All right, like what, what's the difference? There is no difference. It's just like how you prefer, right? I kind of like this because it just reminds me of like therapy. It's just nice. It's nice here, I like it. Um, anyway, I'm gonna drop this orange zest in there, grab some of this lemon. Lemon? I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I don't know my citrus is. This is a lie. I'm gonna put some of that in this mix right here. Throw this. It's gonna get stuck to your whisk. That's totally fine. I don't think you don't know what the hell you're doing because sometimes I have a lot of moments where I do that. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. Whatever, we're gonna mess it up. Use the rest of that flour. And then we're gonna make our dough. So I'm gonna move all these things out the way. We love that, love that. We're gonna just start mixing this and pretty much mix it until it becomes a nice fluffy dough. And that's gonna be the dough for a gnocchi. I'm gonna just take this out. I like the counter. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get in there. And then yeah, I'm gonna need this for a little bit and we'll be back with a nice pretty dough. So, as you can see, we have a nice little round dough. I added a little bit of extra flour because yeah, you want to make sure it's soft, but you don't want to make sure it's like really wet and mushy on the inside. I'm going to take this and I'm going to probably just cut this. And I said probably like if I didn't know if I was going to do it or not. <laughs> I'm going to grab this because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to make a nice little flour doughy snake. So you can just... Ugh. Roll this out, use your finger muscles and kind of just roll it. So it's a little thick on this side, so I'm just keep going. Um, honestly, I have, I, I like cooking for Rhett and Lake. I think those are like some of our best like creative moments is when we do that. The only time I don't like it is when Link tends to bite my finger. And yes, that is a real thing. Gut check, you know that hand that's feeding him? That is me. Okay, so now that we have our nice, Beautiful little doughy snake. We're gonna cut like one inch pieces off the end and just kinda just keep going. And it's okay if they're not like super perfect. I mean, I don't really have like that fancy ass machine, you know, that makes it. Bam, 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 boom, boom. So we're gonna drop all these little ones. I like to reshape some of them if they get a little funky. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Has anybody ever seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? This is like what the boogeyman's body looks like. It's like, so picture this, but like with a face and he's moving like this. Like that's exactly what it reminds me of, right? So I'm gonna take all my little boogeyman's and I'm gonna just drop them in my hot water over here that had boiling forever. And then you're kind of just gonna boil them until they float. And that's when you know they're finished. 
come back in a sec. So what exactly makes this pesto sour is this nice little yellow juice over here, calamansi juice. I like to think of it as just, you know, the Filipino's favorite fruit. It's like super tart and sour. It kind of like gets you in the back of the neck. <laughs> but we're gonna make our pesto with it. And then we're gonna add some walnuts, some Parmesan cheese. We have a nice little yuzu right here. And some garlic. And I'm gonna add some salt for flavor, obviously. Put this in there. Bam. Okay, so I'm gonna try to multitask a little bit. Let's move, move this pot. Move the hot pot over. Do this. It's, it's doing stuff, it's doing stuff. This is hot. We're gonna add some butter. Add a little bit of calamansi juice over here. Bam. That's nice, that's nice. That's beautiful and green. So I'm gonna leave that alone now because it's ready. So this is gonna be like our glaze. I'm, what am I looking for? This. I'm gonna grab all my floating gnocchi over here and kind of just throw this in the glaze. Oh yeah. So we're just gonna let this kind of roam in this. That smells lovely. Smells lovely. So I'm gonna just throw these in this bowl. Bam. I'm about to use a lot of dishes right now because I was supposed to actually grab the plate that I was gonna plate this in. I didn't do that. Bam. Get our pesto and just kinda, you know, get it on there. Nice. I'm gonna move all this crap up the way. Ugh. See why Josh does this now? It just makes my life feel so much better. Okay, that's great. So, we're gonna go ahead and just plate this on our nice white plate so that you can see the green. We have some Parmesan cheese that we're gonna just boom, 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 boom over. Yeah. And then we're gonna grab a couple of basil pieces and just kind of just put it on. Yeah, green. That, my friends, is the sour pesto gnocchi. Boom. Holy shiz, we wrote a cookbook. Woo! Yeah, Woo! look, it's my family, my mythical family in here. Don't we look nice? I actually tested every single recipe in this cookbook, so Woo! I'm very proud of it. And you should definitely purchase this cookbook at mythical.com slash cookbook or anywhere you can find books. So I'm gonna toss this. Catch it, KG. Okay, good catch. <laughs> I am making a French onion soup jelly donut from the Willet Jelly Donut episode. It's a little sweet and nice. I think that you could, some Orbit gum on top of that would be okay. <laughs> you might be like, ma'am, that's a lot of freaking onions. And I would say, yeah, it is. Um, but they're gonna caramelize down and they're gonna become nice and sugary and just sweet. So we're gonna let these slowly cook and then we're gonna ditch this bowl and come over here and roll out our donut dough. So this is just a basic donut dough recipe. Um, we're gonna let the French onion soup jelly shine in this. Um, and we're just gonna punch some holes out. I also, I love the Will It episodes because you're like, Will It? And you're like, I don't know. And then Rhett and Link, <laughs> Rhett and Link are like, no, or they're like, yeah, it will. So that's that's the concept if you haven't seen it. It's looking really nice. Okay, I think this is a good thickness and I'm just gonna cut out a couple of these. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, French onion soup is one of my favorite Soups. I love soup so much. Um, people don't know this, but it is French because you have to French kiss the onions before you cook them. And luckily I sliced them and you didn't have to see that part of it. Um, we have a proofing box over here. This is just gonna help the proofing process. It holds in like the temperature of the dough and make sure that it doesn't dry out. So I'm just gonna place them in here, tuck them away. Good night, donut dough put them by my warm oven to proof a little bit more before we fry them. I have my onions over here. Um, this is gonna take like a couple hours, I don't know. I'm gonna go watch some Married at First Sight and we'll be right back. 
Holy shiz, it smells so good in here. And Annalise can prove it. Right, Annalise? Yeah. Um, when I was making this for the actual Will It Jelly episode, there were like 5,000 people that came in here and they're like, oh my God, what are you making? Like something so good. And I'm like, it's literally just butter and onions. And that is one of God's greatest smells. Cause he smells, he smells like, uh, I don't know if he's a he, I don't know what, who, Never mind. <laughs> We have some gelatin sheets. They're like crackly. I love these. We use them all the time um, in the mythical kitchen when we're making crazy creations. I went through so many packs of these for the Will It Jelly Donut episode. So we have ice water and what you do is just put them in ice water and they bloom in there. And I'll show you the consistency of them in a second. But for now, we are going to add our alcohols to deglaze these onions. Um, some people use white wine, some people use brandy. I wanna use both, you know, get a little crazy with it. I'm just trying to make a really nice French onion soup and then make it weird by putting it inside a donut, so. Okay, yeah, it smells really good in here. Right, Annalise? <laughs> we have some fresh thyme. I thought it would be like fun and creative to like leave the dirt in, but um, now it's just like all over my hands. <laughs> So that was a good production call. I'm gonna leave them um, as sprigs in here, just so I can pull them out a little bit later. Um, I'm gonna add some flour to thicken the soup a little bit, just a little bit, I won't use all of that. And then add my bay leaf, add a little bit of sugar just to sweeten the deal, you know? Even though my onions are very sweet already, I just, it's gonna go inside a sweet donut. So we're making this sweet and savory. And then we have our beef broth. This is one thing I agree with Josh, is like I like using the granulated um, beef bouillon powder and adding water and making kind of your own um, stock rather than buying like the store-bought stock. It tends to be just like very watered down. So let's pour literally all of this in here. Oh God, I'm spilling. That's okay. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna get this back up to a simmer. And then now my gelatin sheets are pretty much ready. You can see that they've like really gotten gelatinized. Um, and then as this heats up, I can just stir this in. And then I'm gonna put this in some containers, put it in the fridge to let it set. And then we're gonna fry off our donuts, fill our donuts, and we'll be right back. I'm back with a donut and I'm going to fry it off in a deep fryer, such as, and I'm gonna come over here. <laughs> it's sinking. Um, I'm gonna come over here and just pinch off a little bit of garnish. I got scissors this time so the dirt wouldn't go anywhere because I'm a smart girl. Um, and just pick some of these off. Okay, there we go, it floats. I love um, cooking for Rhett and Link, totally. Um, they're actually very hard to impress because they've had everything from the show. I did Will It Calzone as well, and I thought it would be smart to bake them off fresh right before the episode, fill them and everything in our really crappy ovens. Um, the entire kitchen was in smoke, like throughout the entire building actually. People were coming in, making sure I was okay, and I wasn't, I was having a little bit of a breakdown, but Rhett and Link don't need to know that. Um, this donut is looking good. I'm just gonna give it a little, oh, oh yeah, okay. This is nice. We have a little browning on there. It's looking nice golden brown. Um, I'm gonna let this finish cooking, let it cool for just a little bit and then fill it up and show you the result. If you've ever been on Married at First Sight, comment below. So we are finishing up our donut here. It's nice and golden brown. It's still pretty warm. I'm gonna puncture a hole in this and just, I'm just using a chopstick literally and just twisting it around to leave a lot of room. Oh no, maybe I need to do it for a little bit longer. Sorry, I need to put this back in for like a second. I thought it was ready. Ugh. Okay, I put it in for a couple extra seconds just to make sure the middle was good, but I am going back in with my chopstick. It's so hot. Also, I meant to do this like whole cooking bee in a French accent because if you're a fan of me, which you're probably not, um, I'm really good at accents. Comment below if you're a fan of me. Comment below if you hate me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna, it's so hot, people. 
All the haters below in the comments probably love that I'm in pain right now. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna let this hole cool for a second, but in the meantime, I'm gonna add some shredded Gruyere cheese on the top. Oh, my French accent. I'm gonna, I'm going to put my wee oui, wee. Oui. Now we just take the torch and we fire up the croissant and we just do that and we just melt slowly. I'm gonna even add more cheese, more cheese. Okay, yeah. Okay, we're getting a nice char on top. It's melting over the donut just like I want. I'll finish torching it in a second. I'm gonna go in with my jelly here. Um, this is kind of like room temp. It is gonna like melt a little bit inside the donut, but that's okay. Let's open up my hole again because the cheese covered my hole. There we go. And then I'm just gonna literally just shove this in. Shove it in. Can somebody um, make my hole bigger? Nicole? It's my special. Can I hold the donut and you just sure. make it? Sure. Just I'm like gonna go to the sides a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger. Okay, no problem. Bigger hole. I'm doing it. <laughs> Harder. I'm doing it. You don't need to. I'm just, you don't need to I'm be trying. A, it's it's a family show. I'm not being it's inappropriate. I'm just show. giving you direction. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. No problem. Okay. I'm gonna just go in here. Oh yeah, that's much easier to stuff. Okay. I'm. I wasn't even trying. It is. A, you guys are making it inappropriate. I'm okay. I just gotta finger the hole a little bit. I'm sorry. All right, thanks V, thanks for the support. Maybe you should have made my hole bigger. Hey. I went out of order of operations here and I was like, let's melt the cheese and then I did it and then it looks like this. You know, cooking is not, this is like Will at Calzone all over again. Like just things go crazy behind the scenes. We're gonna add another layer of cheese. It's going so well. Okay, this is looking really good. <sighs> I'm gonna plate it. I'm gonna go this side, it's prettier. I'm taking my, I, screw the tweezers, we don't need the tweezers anymore. And we're just gonna go on with some time. I'm sweating. Okay, that looks nice. Pepper, my hands are so jelly-y. There you have it, the French onion soup, jelly donuts. Merci. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make the fried chicken bagel from No GMM episode. One of the writers was like, hey, Nicole, can you make a bagel out of chicken? And I said, I don't think anyone's ever done that before, but it looks like a job for us. So this is the fried chicken bagel. I'm basically gonna make a big ass chicken nugget, deep fry it, cut it in half, and put some cream cheese in it. And you're gonna watch that and you're gonna love it. So we're gonna start out with some ground chicken in here. I'm gonna add a skosh. That just means a little bit of Tony C's. That's it. Anything more and it's not a bagel anymore. And then I'm gonna add some salt, garlic powder, onion powder, white pepper, MSG, and some cornstarch. This is basically like a McDonald's chicken nugget. A big ass one. I think the word of the day today is big ass. <laughs> and I'm into it. And I know the keto community is gonna come for me and be like, this is just bread. This is just keto bread. And yeah, it is keto bread, but we're not marketing it that way because the keto diet, it's, it's a little bit of a fraud. It is a lie and you should eat whatever you want. So I'm just lubing up my hands, very important. And now we're gonna shape our chicken bagel. I'm gonna take about, how much is this? Hmm? How much would you say that is? Three quarters of a pound? Feels like three quarters of a pound. I'm just gonna slap this on my, my sheet pan. And of course, a bagel isn't a bagel unless it has a hole. <laughs> that would be a bialy. <laughs> Keep up. So I'm gonna slowly form this into a bagel. Not a donut, because a donut is sweet. A bagel is not. And if you put chocolate chips in your bagel or blueberries, you're the feds. And I'm just gonna gingerly shape this into a reasonable bagel shape. Make the hole a little bit bigger. Everybody relax. Everybody chill. It's not that serious. Okay. 
and yeah this is what my bagel looks like and I'm gonna let it hang out in the freezer for a little bit so it can retain its shape because we're gonna deep fry it that's right see you in a little bit all right now we're ready to fry our fried chicken bagel as you can see the integrity of the hole has stayed. Can you see my eyeball through this, Taylor? Okay, very good. If you put your ear to it, you can hear the ocean. Over here, I got some flour. I'm gonna add, there's already salt in there. Again, a skosh of Tony C's. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the times, um, the writers and the producers, they're like, hey, is it possible to do this? Is it possible for this to be in an episode? They come up to us with like these wacky ideas. A lot of the times the ideas are pun based. And then uh, a writer's like, hey, this is funny. Can you make this into real food? And we say, sure, let's try it. Let's see if it's, if it's, ex if we can execute your brilliant idea. And a lot of the times they're just like, hey, can you, can you uh, fry this star? And you're like, sure, I can fry the star. What do you want the star to be made of? They're like pork. And I'm like, okay, we'll make a pork star. You know what I mean? Weird things happen. It's always important to make the food entertaining. Entertaining doesn't always equate delicious though, right? So it's always an important thing to teach people. You're not cooking for the masses. You're cooking for the eyeballs of the people. So we're gonna take this flesh colored, monster and dip it in our flour. Now this part's gonna get a little bit messy, I'm not gonna lie, there's gonna be a lot of uh, picking and prodding at it. It's not because I want to, it's because I have to. So the vibe of my look today, I know everyone is wondering. <laughs> Nicole, why are you wearing glasses, hoops, a bandana, and this weird puffy sweater? And you know, sometimes it's not that I get ready in the dark, it's like... <laughs> I get ready kind of late, you know, like I'm like rushing out of the door. I'm like, hmm, let's try this look. And I think the vibe is uh, our substitute art teacher from Vermont moved to Berkeley and is deciding to teach little kids how to do paper mache and, mo and modge podge. Anybody else feel the vibe? Oh, thanks. And I'm gonna take the everything bagel seasoning, very important, and I'm just gonna dot it over the top. Very important, we are going to be deep frying it with all the seeds and all the stems and all that stuff, all that good, good stuff. And then again, the integrity of the hole is incredibly important because a bagel without a hole is what? A bialy, thank you! That's nice, that looks good. We're going to gingerly place it on our spider and we're gonna let it fry. Have you guys ever seen something so beautiful? Look at this, <laughs> it's literally it is what it is. It is a fried chicken bagel. And a bagel is not complete unless it has cream cheese on it. So, uh, just to be clear, I've, this is my first time cutting into this. I have no idea what it's gonna look like inside. Did I temp check it? No, of course I did. Um, it should be fully cooked inside. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> For my surgeon-like precision to make sense, I'm gonna get down to eye level to this chicken fried bagel. Okay. Make a small incision and then just slowly guide my knife all the way around it. Okay, it's making sense, it's making sense. Everything is exactly where it needs to be. Okay, are you ready for the grand reveal? Can I get a Hoya? Oh, yeah? Thank you so much, all right. Okay, look at that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And like a typical bagel, we're not gonna toast it because who the hell toasts the bagel around here? Not me. I'm gonna stay down here because it's comfortable. <laughs> I'm gonna take some cream cheese and I'm gonna just <laughs> mash it in there. <laughs> Should I cream cheese the other side? Can I get? Can I get a? Can I get a whole yeah for ya? Yeah? Oh, I missed a spot. How could I? Okay, it's hard to do this on your knees. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> That's the bottom part, this is the top part. Uh-huh, crown it. And there you have it, fried chicken bagel. <laughs> you might see this on a GMM episode, it's highly plausible. If you do, make sure to come back to this video and say, hey, I saw that, Nicole, you were right, I guess it worked, they wanted to do it. Push. Wow. Yeah. I am utterly speechless. I love what's going on here. Um, I'm gonna rank all these dishes, decide a winner, decide ultimately a loser, and then decide somebody who's perfectly average. 
That is what second place is. Uh, v, what have we here? Um, this is a sour pesto gnocchi. It is made with potatoes, orange zest, lime zest in the dough, and then it has calamansi juice in the pesto, which what makes it sour. That is utterly fascinating. It's almost like a savory gusher. You know, you're getting a fair amount of umami uh -huh. from the parm, a ton of citrus zest. Like I keep wanting to go back, it's giving you that little warhead sourness. Mm -hmm. Calamansi is super sharp, and bitter, but also very aromatic. Thank you, chef. I dig on that, man. I dig. That's yeah. fun. That's fun yeah. time. Um, Lily, your donuts made us sick. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, what's this? Would you recommend me going straight for the hole or sort go of? Go for it right the, for the hole and playing around it. Nicole made it larger for me because I needed help. Oh, it's very cold. Uh, what was this? Yeah, because it needs to stay in jelly form. It's a French onion soup jelly donut. <laughs> And I made out with the onions myself. I French kissed them because that's oh. what makes French onion soup French. I bet you didn't know that. Yeah. It was really good. You It'd like? be better if the inside was hot, but I understand it needs to stay jelly. Mm -hmm. But it tastes unmistakably like French onion soup. The donut is fried really nicely. The cheese on top is great. Love the addition of the thyme and black pepper. It's really selling the whole dish. Well, the inside's a little tough to get by. I will say it's giving like aspic, right? Because of the temperature? The temperature, the savory, um, cold, gelatinous. I spit a little bit on, don't, don't look at that. This concept has a ton of legs. I think if this wasn't made for GMM, <laughs> it'd be really delicious. But I understand that this is for Willie and we're testing the bounds of science, not necessarily trying to make the best diet. But I will say, this is in impeccably executed. Thank well, you. Well done. Uh, Nicole, what, explain me your donut. Chicken fried bagel. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> uh, this is the temperature it's supposed to be served at, it's just ice cold. Uh, I would say room temp is the vibe. Okay, okay, uh, heard chef. Uh, do I eat it open face or closed? Eat it like a bagel. Okay. No, this no! This is how I eat a bagel. We literally did a whole podcast about this. Stop monster. being weird. You're the monster. I'm literally not being weird. I am the monster. I am the creator of the monster, so I'm Dr. Yeah, this monster. Wins. This wins. Easy. <laughs> Hey, this wins. This is so much better than everything else. This oh is my a God. competition. Let me get a oh piece. My God. You're not even eating it right. What do you mean? No, you put some hot sauce on that. That's incredible. It is a giant chicken nugget. I can't take it far. I'm going to mess it up. With like garlic, onion, oh, seeds good. in it, filled with cheese. This is yeah, the man. new. I do want a piece. It's so good. Down. I do want a piece. This is excellent. The feeling of your teeth it's sinking through the chicken and then hitting the cream cheese. It is both familiar that's and really completely good. alien yeah, to you that's really good. in a way that excites you and also disgusts you, the way that any great art should make you feel. Do I win? Nicole is the winner. V, I'm giving you second place. Lily, I think you executed this well, what but <laughs> but this this is uh, utterly sickening to me. It's if I jelly. To, I, yeah, it's a. It's Come a, on. It's, I know. I don't want to even know. You, you open mine. mine. I don't want to eat it. Oh my god. Second I will say, place. You all did a great job, but that uh, disgusts me and not in like. You know, a fun way that makes me kind of come back. Um, Second place. I am proud of all of you for doing all this. And I'm proud of all of you at home for doing all the things that you do. I assume, unless you're like a deadbeat dad, pay your child support. I'm not proud of you then. We'll see y'all next time. The Mythical Cookbook is finally here. Order your copy now at mythicalcookbook.com and make any kitchen a mythical kitchen.